University of Texas at Austin, the uh, home team, if you will. Yes. Uh, Tim Wong is rated 1959 on the USA TT rating. And Charles Dung is at 2278. So while there is a margin, I think it's going to be an interesting game. Charles Dung with the serve. And we've seen most of the players struggle uh, on the return of serve from Dang of Brown being the fact that he's a lefty. Mm. He has some beautiful serves coming out of that left-hand side. Absolutely. The, uh, the left-handed players, they usually have an advantage since their forehand strikes the, uh, the right-handed player's backhand. And most table tennis players, their backhand is weaker. So it definitely has an advantage. Now, the one thing we're going to see here is that Tim Wong of UT Austin has primarily gone heavy underspin ball, serve short, mm. step around, hit a wide forehand. This time, that forehand is going to be going into the forehand of Charles Dang. Does he mix it up and maybe play more to the middle? Does he try to rip some down the line? I think one thing I've noticed about Tim Wong is that he plays the more control game. He's usually not the one to initiate attacks. So I think he definitely needs to change that if he wants to, if he wants to win this game. Now four to two, Tim with the serve. And that's a great start there by Tim Wong. Obviously, you know, he's the lower seated player in this round robin good mm -hmm. group. Charles Dang is the number one in this group. And uh, Tim Wong just got his first win uh, in the round robin. So he's actually at one all in the pairing. He still has a chance to advance out. The fact that he's leading here 6-2 in game one versus the number one seed speaks volumes about this young man. Absolutely. He's got a lot of potential. Oh, Popped up the ball a bit too high there. But he's still doing fine. He's leading six to three. Good adjustment there on that return of serve. He was able to play the ball a little bit lower. Mm -hmm. Just wow. a beautiful exchange there for both <gasps> players. At one point, they both thought they were out of the point, but they were right back in it. And uh, you couldn't have asked them anything more of both of the players as they exchanged some pretty uh, huge forehands there. <laughs> oh, good forehand wide out to Tim's one. He wasn't able to reach it. And that's a, a play that we've seen uh, work uh, from the other two opponents that played Tim Wing earlier this morning. Right. I would argue that Tim Wong's footwork isn't as good as the other players in this seed. So he's definitely going to have to uh, keep moving to get to the balls. Well, we see he's got a lot of explosion and power out coming out of his core, but it's mm. always moving to his left versus going to the right side. All right. The serve error. It's okay. Nice, good spinny shot by Tim Wong. Yeah, we've seen Tim take a little bit off of it, go with a very controlled soft loop and uh, give his opponents just as much trouble as that big, big, uh, big forehand loop. Oof. And Tim takes game one, 11 to 7. And that's exactly what you'd like to see here from the number four seed in this round robin group. Mm. Tim Wong takes game one, 11 7 versus the top seed. And he's got to be feeling really good going to his corner. I think he's taking some of that momentum out of his previous win uh, against the uh, uh, opponent, Amadouid of Liberty. I think so. He's taking the uh, more aggressive approach. I think he realized that 
control isn't going to help him win the game. So just need to increase his loops, more attacks, and he should be able to take this. And I would I would dare to say that, you know, we've seen him go, you know, open second ball attack when he was playing a lot of his opponents earlier. He knows for sure he's going to have to be the take the offensive side mm. against a player like Dang, the number one seed here in this group. Um, but sometimes the, the forehand can abandon him a little bit, and it gets a little wild. Um, what would you advise him to do if we know that he's going to have to be aggressive, he's going to have to go forehand uh, early and often in this match if he wants to stay ahead? Right. Um, I would say he should focus more on the third ball attack. Th uh, for people who don't know, third ball attack is when you, you know, when you have a serve with a particular goal in mind, either for the opponent to pop the ball up or just like give you an opportunity to attack on the third ball. It's now game two. It's Tim Wong with the serve. And there again, we see Tim Wong going on the forehand, but he just sprays that one really long. Kind of a lazadaisical approach to that loop. Mm. Very spinny serve. Charles Dome was not able to return. And there again, I, I really wish I would see that, that backhand a little bit more from Tim Wong. It, it shows that he's able to control, roll over the backhand nice. It's not overpowering, right. but it definitely has some good spin on it. Yeah. And there's oh, his shot. Pitch. Big forehand out wide. He follows it right back up with a big forehand into the corner of Deng. And there's not much that any player, regardless of rating, is going to be able to do about that combination. Absolutely. Switching the player from forehand to backhand is very devastating. Oh, missed and again, opportunity. He had his chance there. He set it up with a nice backhand. We mm. were seeing him going backhand a little bit more here than he usually has. And he just took his shot long. He went for the risky backhand, and yeah, I think he kind of had to laugh at himself there. <laughs> <laughs> He's played three. This is his third match already, and it's the first time we've seen him take that backhand off the yeah, table. From way off. It's it's no. cool. tricky serve by Charles. Charles Dank definitely has some tricky serves. That's one of the reasons why he's gone done so well here in this opening round, Robin. Absolutely. Just clip the edge of the net. Charles Dang is now up 5-3. Tim with the serve. Very slow, spinny serve. Charles is now up six to four. Oh, very strong backhand by Tim. Right into Charles' backhand. Good opportunity. Tim, Tim popped it up and Charles was able to easily take control of the situation. Caught that ball just off the edge there. But that is the right shot, forehand out wide uh, to Tim Wong is the, the direction that you want to go. Ooh. Not that time. <laughs> Looks like he, he finally stepped out there and got what he wanted. Yep. It was a little bit of a slower shot, but he needs to start moving to his right uh, to look for more opportunities there. Absolutely. Uh, Charles had the chance to uh, kill the ball, but he instead went for a side spin, and that wasn't enough. And Tim Wong knows he can't give away any points right now at this stage in the match.
who push out wide to Charles' back end and didn't connect with the table. Very strong, spinny shot from Charles. Now this is his, this is game point to Charles, 10 to seven. It's Tim with the serve. Oh. A little bit of a misjudgment there. The ball had more spin than Charles anticipated. This is now his second game point. And he takes it. Scores yeah, now tied 1-1. One, one. It's exactly what Tim Wong wanted, long forehand serve that, that he's going to open up, obviously, with the forehand side. But uh, he cracked that one long, and I, I see smiles and a little bit more relaxation in the corner of Charles Dang of Brown as he evens this matchup here at one all in his men's round robin. Now, you mentioned earlier, uh, Dylan, that you're kind of out of base out of Washington, D.C., but yes. you're um, at NYU right now. At one point, were you competing with that team? Uh, I, I'm a freshman right now, so I'm in this program where I spend the first year in a, uh, in like not at NYU, at another campus, so I'm, I'm, I go to D.C., but next year I am going to the main New York campus, and then I plan on playing for the team. Awesome. So then that means that it's a very good possibility yeah. that Dylan will not be with us in the booth next year, that we're going to be commentating on his match. <laughs> NYU versus someone. Someone. At USC, UT Austin. Oh, we can take them. Yeah, Maryland, anybody, you hear that? He's already he's <laughs> already calling shots, throwing shade to people, saying that NYU is going to take just about anybody because he's going to be competing with them that next year. So, obviously, he's got to feel pretty confident in himself. Oh, yeah. He'll get me to, get, get me to tear down his game. And <laughs> Looking forward to it. This is now game three between Charles Dung and Tim Wong. Ooh. See, once again, it's Tim Wong with the, uh, the slow footwork. Didn't quite get him to the ball in time. That's a good third ball attack. That is the strategy that you should be working on and just in case you don't know we do have this going in live stream that you're watching this match Charles Dong versus Tim Wong but out on table number two it's a women's quarterfinal doubles match it's the UC Berkeley team versus the uh, opponents from Texas Wesleyan Ellen Wong an NCTTA veteran competing unfortunately there's no Lily Zhang this year with UC Berkeley uh, they've got Ellen Wong looking to lead that team uh, into another strong showing here at the College Nationals. Mm -hmm. They've got a tough international duo with the pairing out of uh, Texas Wesleyan. Anastasia Rivka versus uh, Edina Hararachik. Yep. You're going to see some firepower out there in table number two. Back to table one. Tim Wong is losing one to six. But he counters with a very strong forehand. Let's hope he can tie up the score. So now Charles done with the serve. He's leading six to two. And again, you notice there, Tim Wong struggles with any kind of defense on the forehand side. Hmm. Oh, a bit of a bad service return. It's now two to eight. Even even though he did miss this shot, I still think being aggressive that is the play to be because Charles Dung is a very aggressive player, and if you just let him attack, he's he's going to win the points ninety percent of the time. And once again, you're still contending with the fact that the spin is in reverse considering he's left-handed. Hmm. Oh. Going back to the tough bread and butter service game, Charles Dong up 10-3. He's rolling here in game number three. And he takes it. 
Charles, Charles Dong is now up two to one in the best of five. And it looks like the pairing from Wesleyan is up 2-0 as the team pairing from UC Berkeley to serve. And the pairing of UC Berkeley looking to get on the board as they trail once again 0-2 in this women's quarterfinals. Here we are at the start of game four in table one. And we've seen great starts from Tim Wong in the past as he opens up you know, heavy serves, and he just goes right back to that big forehand. It's what got him his first win. Mm -hmm. It's what got him game one uh, here in this round robin. So, Joe, what do you think is going on in Tim Wong's head after he won the first game and now lost two in a row? Well, we saw him just attempt something that we haven't really seen a lot from him so far. I mean, that was a, a forehand flip kill, if you will. Uh, we haven't seen him attempt that shot too much. Like I said, mostly it's been inside out forehands from him. Uh, I'm hoping that he's not feeling like he's, he's living and dying by that shot, but he is. We've seen some moments of brilliance from him on the backhand side where he just kind of had a nice controlled uh, top spin loop there off the backhand side, and he's been had some success with it. Success with it. But unfortunately, you know, the short game is what's failed him a little bit. Mm. And obviously also moving out wide, he's going to have to want, like we talked about earlier when he, he was uh, competing against uh, Masan Amadouid of Liberty University, he's got to be able to set up his, his strongest shot. Absolutely. And that's what we want to see out of him uh, here in game number four. Berkeley took game number three. They trail 1-2 as the parent from Wesleyan serves in that women's quarterfinal doubles match. This is a good controlled shot by Tim Wong. He's going back to the control style. I just don't see that being enough, unfortunately, against an experienced player like Charles Dang. He tries to control, eventually he steps off the table, then he puts himself in a defensive position and that's really not where he wants to be. Yeah, like when you're in the defensive position, there's it's going to be very hard to get back. And Tim Wong calls a timeout. Yeah, and it's a smart move. I mean, obviously he showed he had a chance to win this match as he took the opening game, and he still feels like he has some opportunity as long as that forehand's connecting. There's definitely a chance for him. So, you know, smart move by taking a timeout. We didn't see a lot of the players do that earlier uh, today, regardless of where they were in their match, whether they were tied at deuce or it was well out of hand. You know, if you've got a timeout, use it. Why not? Give the chance. Give yourself a chance to resettle and uh, get yourself back in the match. Obviously, it stops some of the momentum from your opponent. Right. Yeah, it was definitely a smart move. He was... He was letting Charles take way too many shots, and I feel like the coach would be telling him to stop doing the control game, because it's not going to be enough. You need to be aggressive. So now Charles doing with the serve. This is game four. And again, the uh, short flip off the forehand side, he just struggles with. Mm. The adjustment from forehand to backhand just wasn't there. I think it maybe it caught him off guard that the uh, opponent was able to control those big loops so well. And uh, he was just really late on hitting that, uh, that backhand. Yep, just wasn't enough. 
There it is. That's, that's what he needs to do to win the shots. I think he's been relying too much on his backhand for control, and that's not, most of the time, that's not going to win him the points. He needs the forehand. And there it is. There's the forehand shot once again. Very strong. There's Charles with the serve, 9 to 5. Wow. That <laughs> is uh, an impressive backhand <laughs> bang. I think he just decides, he's like, well, I'm up 9-5 in the, in the fourth game. Yeah. Why not open yeah, it up, I right? can go There's for some risky shots. nothing wrong with taking a chance. Yeah. And this is his this match point. And, and there it is. That's match. So Charles Dang ends up 2-1 in this men's opening round. Robin, Tim Wong of UT Austin goes 1-2. We've got one more match coming up. It's going to be the second seed, Philippe Kochka of Lindenwood versus Masan Amadouid of Liberty University. I'm Joe Wells, and alongside me is Dylan Lay, and we'll be right back.